everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to work on our little Ferguson here. Now that we've got it running okay, we're going to uh, do a little bit of work on it, kind of maintenance and service stuff, and just get it kind of back so it's a, an operational machine. First thing we did was change the hood. That was a tremendous improvement just doing that. You can see here... Um, this is the one that was on it. It's an old one. Uh, Ferguson hoods, there were aluminum hoods, there were steel hoods, and there were ones like this that have a uh, steel top and aluminum sides. And somewhere along the line, uh, the bottoms of the sides have been cracked and repaired, and the bottom of the grill got ripped off. Uh, I kind of wonder if it might have been cut off. Sometimes if they run a loader on these things, they'll... they'll um, cut the bottom of the grill off because they've got to put the, um, the hydraulic pump sticking out the front of it, you know. But anyway, we have no need for any of that, so uh, that's a lot better. I've had that hood kicking around here for years and years and years. I'm very happy to finally use it on something. First things first is an exhaust system. Um, we're going to go with a vertical one. So I found this, this flange, and a hunk of pipe. Who knows what it's off of, but we've got it. All I had to do, you can see there, I had to oval out the holes a little bit because they were a little bit too far apart. But that's fine. That'll go right on there like that. Sorry. And then we've got this U-bend here. Right, we have to shorten it up. So the U-bend will come up. Like so. Oh, I better narrow the front of it up first because I got a funny feeling, look, that this drag link is going to end up right underneath the U-bend and we do not want the uh, drag link hitting it. The only other thing you can do is go way down, right? But then you can set your field on fire. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get it narrowed up. There's this side narrowed up. That's a lot more, uh, looks a lot more Ferguson-like. Good. So now uh, we got this side on the go. So what I have to do uh, when you're moving this, you need this here to be able to, to move. And it, as usual, it's seized solid. So we got to get this. Uh, I had to do the same job on the other side. Just you get the nut loosened off and then you start heating this here and working this the, with an impact gun back and forth. And eventually it frees up and then you're good to go. Um, the other thing I noticed, the bolts are too long. Mostly because this thing, uh, like we know from the valve on the side, had a Ferguson manure loader on it at some point in its life. And part of that is longer bolts for the front axle because the, it picks up off the front axle. It's got big, heavy mounting brackets. So uh, we'll hang on to these because we do have a Ferguson manure loader kicking around here. Maybe it'll end up back on this thing. That'd be fitting, wouldn't it? There's the difference in the bolt. Uh, lucky I've had so many of these things over the years. Um, I got lots of bolts. So we'll put the right length ones back in. It looks a lot better. Well, that looks a heck of a lot better, doesn't it? Now we got to do something about these tires. You see here we've got a three rib, you know, just a three rib 616 tractor tire on this side. <laughs> and on this side we got an old truck tire. So uh, we're going to put a pair of... Uh, uh, 400 by 19, uh, we call them pizza cutters on it. Um, I'll show you what we've got. Here we go. Problem is, you can see on these two, these tires don't match neither. We got an old school, an old school one. This is a really old style with the scallops around here. That kind of neat. And this one is a uh, five rib. And when I blow it up, it goes flat. So we're going to go to the junkyard and see if we can find something else we can use well here we are in my <laughs> my personal backyard uh, junkyard and uh we've got this old ferguson here has got a tire it's a perfect match with the scallops on it and the right tread pattern so we'll grab that one and uh we'll worry about matching uh the other one because it's got a it's got a three rib on this side so we can match that up later you can see on this one the mounting brackets for a Ferguson manure loader, uh, like I explained to you. On this one, <laughs> they didn't put the longer bolt. Well, they put one longer bolt. Uh, funny. 
stuff all gets mixed and matched over time, eh? What I've done now is I've got this side as high as uh, on a high axle stand to get the axle tilted all the way over so that the radius rod and the drag link are articulated up like that so we can make sure when we make our exhaust that it's not going to get involved with that. I think we'll be okay. We're going to cut it with our uh, handy dandy close quarter uh, pipe cutter here. This is a great thing if you ever happen across one of these at an auction. That's where I got this one. It's pretty cool, eh? It's slow, but it works. So you can see here our flange almost fits in, but not quite. I could maybe with the grinder put a little slit in it and knock it in, but what we're gonna do first, we'll just get the, the pipe stretcher in there and see if we can give it just a little tweak. And that should give us the room we need. Well, so far so good. Now I need to find the muffler. I, I hope I've gotten out far enough from the hood because the muffler we've got is a pretty fat one. And you can see there we've got plenty of room. We'll have to make a little adapter pipe for it, but that's, uh, that's the next step. So what we can do right now is get this back off of here and get the flange welded to the pipe. That's pretty good. So when I go to put it together permanent like, we'll, uh, we'll put a clamp on here, because I, I stretched it a little much, but anyway, that's okay. And I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of, you can see there it's, it's pretty boingy, so I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of a, a little strap. Um, back to one of these manifold bolts back here or or something we'll we'll figure that out now we need to work on the air cleaner i'll show you how we're going to do that i've got this piece of flexible air intake hose and um because we've got the the pipe going up we've got lots of room underneath here we don't need to worry about this thing getting near anything hot so uh that should be good these are actually two different sizes. The carburetor is a little bit smaller than, than uh, the, the air cleaner outlet. But um, this fits perfectly over the carburetor, wrong end. And uh, it's a little loose on that, or, or a little tight onto there. So I just got my uh, exhaust pipe stretcher and kind of stretched her out a little bit. And it worked perfect. So now we'll, I'm going to get it clamped onto there. And then we'll figure out what we need for length. And I'll, I'll cut it to length and we'll get it hooked onto the carburetor. There we go. So we've got our air intake hose on. It's away from the, the hot exhaust. It's all good. We could even, we could even pull it a little further over there if we wanted to with that, with, clamp it to this pipe, but we're okay. We've got lots of room there. So what we're going to do now is give this baby a nice oil change and, um, See what comes out of it. I don't think it's going to be too pretty what comes out. That's for sure. I've pulled the dipstick out and looked at it a couple of times. And uh, once it's empty, we'll pull this. This is the pickup screen. We'll pull that out, clean it, and put it back in. Well, that stuff was pretty nasty. And now we'll pull the filter down. Uh, this is another thing that they changed on the later ones. On the earlier ones... There's a long screw up through here that threads into the canister, and it's a little awkward. These later ones, uh, with the screw up from the bottom, are, are much easier to deal with. So we'll pull that down. Uh, I think I can get the drain pan so it catches both. Yep. And let me tell you, what I went through to get that drain plug out, I think it's been in there a long time. Um, and also, I noticed when I pulled the drain plug out, um, if there's any water, like antifreeze in there, It'll, it'll come out first, but uh, there was nothing. As soon as I pulled the plug out, just black gold. Something else unique on these Fergusons, the, the ones with the standard engine, not the, the ones with the Continental engine. Um, you see here, this is the oil pressure relief valve. So what happens when these things get old and they start to lose oil pressure because they're all wore out? Uh, a lot of people had it in their mind. They would loosen this jam nut and turn this screw all the way down. 
Oh, when you start the thing up, look at all the oil pressure because uh, it's not going into relief when it's cold. But then as soon as it warmed up, you'd have no oil pressure just like you had before. Um, I've had some where they were screwed in so far. If you had, you know, because the engine is worn out, you'll have heavy oil in it. And if you start that thing up on a cold day, I've seen the oil pressure gauges hit 100 on these things. <laughs> so yeah, that's not for turning up the oil pressure. It's factory set. Just leave it. Look at this filter. It's been in there so long, it's actually coming apart. Thankfully, I've got a new one. Um, I always keep, for a Ferguson and an N-Series Ford, I always keep an oil filter on the shelf, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm glad I had one. Okay, there we go. We got our new filter cartridge installed in there. And we got it all cleaned out. There was some nasty sludge down in the bottom of that. That, that filter, well, you can see it's been in there a long time. Oh, boy. Glad we, glad we uh, got that. And when you start putting it together, you see there, there's a spring down in the bottom of it that pushes the cartridge up against the head. So that's what you want to feel. You want to make sure that spring is, is doing its thing. So we're good. Now we're going to pull the pickup screen out to service it. Um, if you're planning on doing this, think ahead order a gasket. Worst case, you can get a piece of cereal box and, and make one. I've made lots of gaskets that way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get the wire brush here and just kind of clean around this area so we can get out the nuts easy. Then we'll take all these nuts off and this thing will just pull straight out. And there it comes. And I think our gasket stayed in one piece. Yeah, look at all the sludge on the bottom of that. So we'll get that all cleaned up and we'll put it back in. Also, when you're pulling this thing off, you see there, there's um, seal washers behind the nuts. Make sure you don't lose them. <clears throat> when we put this back in, you'll see how the hole is offset. That's the bottom. There's the oil pickup tube right in there. You can just see the end of it. That's got to go over that. There, just like that. We caught it. And in she goes. There. Now we can put our seal washers and our nuts back on. And uh, hopefully our used gasket isn't going to leak. Now we'll put some oil in it. We're going to start with this. I've had this. This uh, half a jug of STP kicking around here forever, so uh, it, it can't hurt it. We'll, we'll put it in there. STP, stay together, please. Aha, uh -huh. now you know what it stands for. And then we'll put in uh, five liters of 1540 diesel oil. Uh, these like, you know, heavy stuff, 1540. Uh, if you've got a low oil pressure one, 20W50 is fine too. Now... I'm going to show you a little trick on these English Fergusons. Sometimes you'll start them up and it takes forever for the oil pressure gauge to react. And I'll show you why. Uh, this down here, this is the oil pressure pipe going up to the gauge. And it's got a banjo fitting on the end. Let me pull this bolt out and I'll show you what we're going to do. This here is the banjo bolt for the oil pressure gauge. And you'll see here, they didn't cut it all the way down to the end. Usually a banjo bolt, you'll find they'll, they'll be drilled up through the center with a cross drill here. That's not how they did it on these. So it relies on the oil pressure actually wicking past this first thread and a half before it can get up to here, which makes it very slow to react. So we're going to get a file and just file a little notch in the end, or you can do it with a zip wheel. That's probably the easier way to do it. Let me grab that. That's all we have to do. You can do it with a hacksaw. You can do it with anything. And now our gauge will react instantly. This stuff is really gooey and it's really hard to get it out of the jug. So uh, once you think you've got it empty, when you start putting your oil in, uh, fill this thing up halfway with oil and shake it. The STP will mix with the oil and then it'll come right out. Got it mostly filled up. I'm just getting the dregs out of the jug, and then we'll we'll uh, let that sit upside down in the in the in the oil spout there, and get every last drop. 
In the meantime, while we're waiting on that, I pulled the hydraulic dipstick out. So that is the um, transmission, the diff, and the, the built-in hydraulics. And there's nothing at all on the dipstick. So uh, we're going to um, pull this cap off and we're going to start filling that up with uh, GL5 gear lube. Yep, you can see she's dry as a bone down in there. So we'll get that filled up. Who knows where it all went over the years. Um, it could have come out the PTO seal or leaked out the bottom, you know. Who knows. We'll fill it up and see what happens. And you got to give it time uh, to get to the back because it actually has to percolate through the bearings and stuff. There's no direct passage. Although maybe, hopefully on these newer ones, they solved that problem and drilled a hole to connect them. But I know on the earlier ones, you fill it in the transmission and it takes forever, especially when it's cold like this, to, for it to get into the back. We'll just let it sit there and, and let it percolate back. And then uh, we'll put some more in later. If it's if it's dead empty, it'll take all of one of these pails. What we'll do now while we wait on that oil to go down, our level box here is a mess. You can see it's bent here and it's bent there. And the, the, the threaded adjuster in here is seized. Uh, the gearbox works. You can see it moving there, but it's it's stuck down there, which is pretty common. Well, it's slowly going down, so we dumped the rest of the jug in there. Well, now the oil's starting to get to the back, and we found the culprit. That'll have to be fixed. A quick trip to the barn, and I found another PTO, just a whole assembly that's got it. You can feel the seal is really good in it. So I've got a new gasket. So we're going to uh, take the bolts out, quickly pull this thing out, and stick the new one in, and hopefully we don't lose too much oil. You can see this is Mark 9N. This isn't even from this. This is from a Ford. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, it's just all... It's it's all loose. Loosey-goosey. No worries. Well, that was fun. Now I got to dump this stuff uh, back in. Okie dokie. Well, that one doesn't leak. Well, after a lot of torching... Uh, we got the level box off. Once it cools down, we'll uh, we'll get into it. We got to take it apart, and uh, I'm not sure if it can even be saved. Um, it, this bend up here is concerning because it's so close to the it's so close to the head. But yeah, you know, it doesn't hurt to try and fix it, does it? The level box is going to take kind of three steps to repair. Uh, it's bent here, it's bent here, and it's seized here, the thread. So the first thing we're going to do before we waste our time trying to straighten it is see if we could free up this thread. So we're going to heat it up here. The thread, about that much of it, there's no thread. The thread starts down there. So we'll heat it up in this area here and then use this bar to see if we can get it, to get it, see if we can get it moving. And then once we know that it's free, we'll straighten out that, and we'll straighten out this. Oh, well, we got it off. Somewhere along the line, somebody didn't get the meaning of what that grease fitting was for. Um, that, number one, it, it, it greases the thread in there. Number two, the grease seals it and keeps water out. Oh, well, that's how it goes. While we're waiting on that stuff to cool down, we're going to service up the air cleaner cup. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. It definitely needs servicing. So we'll dump this stuff out and see how much crud is in the bottom of it. Well, I'd say that's a lot of crud. Sand, silt, yuck. That ain't been serviced in a long time. Yeesh. That looks a lot better. Now we can put that back together. So cleaning all the sludge out of this thing, we found a leak. And there you can see a little pinhole in it right there. So I cleaned this thing all up. I'm gonna let it dry and uh, then we'll braise it up. It'll be fine. There we go. Perfect. Now once this cools down, 
We'll go over to the buffing wheel and clean this thread up. Now we got to see about straightening this guy. I think maybe I'm going to try and do it in the press. All right, perfect. We'll let it cool off. We'll replace these two grease fittings and then we can put it back on. Oh, there we go. Brazing with a cutting torch. That's a mechanics art. Now I'm going to go over to the solvent tank this time and fill it up with solvent. If that stuff won't leak through it, oil won't. I'll let that sit there for a few minutes and make sure it's not going to leak. Looks pretty good so far. Yep, that looks good. So I'll dump this crap out, we'll dry it out, and put it together. Let's that back together. And I did look up on from underneath, and the screen and everything, it was not all filled with stuff. A lot of times, the screen down in here, it gets all filled with, with hunks of grass and nuts and shells and stuff from rodents. But it, it was clean as a whistle, so we just left it. What I have to do tomorrow is look at my junk. There's supposed to be a rubber boot that goes from the top of the air cleaner. Uh, look, it's like a little trumpet, and it goes up to this vent in the dash. I think I've got a good used one in my junk. I'll check uh, that tomorrow. Now what I want to try and do is get, uh, this is the charge light. I want to try and get that working. And our tractor has a light switch on it. I'd like to see if that works. And we can get this work light and uh, take the headlights off the old hood and put them on this hood and get some lights working on it. There's that all tidied up. There's our level box working nicely. It'll work better once I grease it. And I got uh, a top link pin and a, and a linch pin, a linch clip uh, installed on, the, on the, original, the original little check chains. All right, you can see here, Got the charge light working, and um, I had to take uh, apart the headlight switch. You can see it in there. I had to take apart the headlight switch, clean up the contacts in it, and now there we are. Our work light is working. So we're gaining on it. What I've done now, um, I got the headlights off the old hood, but there was torching required. So everything is hot right now. So they're just uh, sitting there on the floor till they cool off. Okay, now we've got a couple of headlights on and I checked them, they work. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next because I, I found something that I don't like. How this thing is wired is, uh, this wire here is coming out of the ignition switch and it's basically one big splice running everything. So. This is running the ignition, that's fine, the, the primary of the ignition. And this is the, the basically the sensing wire that goes over to the charging system, that's fine too. But they've also got the feed for the lights uh, coming off of this. And the problem with these things when they get old, if you get any, um, sometimes you get a, a little bit of resistance in these old ignition switches and it just it just taxes the electrical system a little bit. So. We're going to eliminate this current from going through the ignition switch. We're going to snip that off there and just go right over to this power stud here with an inline fuse holder. That way, number one, this circuit will be fused now. And number two, it'll get that load off of the ignition switch. I got the wiring tidied up a little bit in there. That's good. Now what we need to do, I've pulled the battery holder out. Uh, it's two parts. It's like this shelf here and this little basket. The basket isn't too bad. It's rotted out. It needs one little repair here. You can see on that little corner, we could do that. But the shelf, this end of it is all busted and collapsed. And we need to get that uh, shoved back up and uh, we'll weld it back together, I guess, or put a little patch over it or something. So there's that all fixed up. We got this holder and the battery tray all fixed up. The battery is in, the cables are all serviced up, both ends cleaned um, and got protectant on them. I installed a battery cutoff switch, so we're looking good. Now I found a couple things I want to do at the back. I added a slow moving vehicle sign to it, a tail light, and the work light, we fixed it all up and put a switch on it. 
That works nicely. I even found the right toolbox for it in all my junk. The original was totally rotted. I think now it's time we could see if this thing will crank up and take it for a spin. Well, it's a lot better with a muffler on it. It's moving around, but when we when we take it apart to paint it, I'll put a clamp on that. And uh, what else? The charge light went off. That's good, so she's still charging. You can see there, she's got oil pressure. All right, let's get it outside. This is a nice little tractor. Oh, look at we got a light out already. We'll have to fix that. Man, it steers nice. What a nice little machine. I also never thought to check the hitch, eh? Oh yeah, up she goes. Good. Perfect. Down. That. Okay, so that's good. By the time I got back in here, both headlights are burned out. I kind of wonder if they're six volt ones. You know? I don't know. We'll stick another one in and see what happens. All fixed. Alright, I got it getting warmed up and it's still got lots of oil pressure. That's pretty good for one of these. It's running a little choppy right now, but you'll see we got a vacuum leak right there because I think I've got the wrong gasket. Check this out. So we'll fix that up. So that went pretty well. This is a nice little tractor. Um, and I can't wait to see how it runs when I fix that carburetor gasket. Uh, maybe the manifold gasket is no good too. Who knows? Anyway, we'll fix the carburetor gasket first and see what we got. But uh, hey, for now, we have accomplished our mission. We have made this into a usable Ferguson. We can put it to work or do whatever we got to do with it. Anyway, this has run kind of long. I'm going to take off now. I'll uh, catch you in the next one. And until then, this is Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage. And thanks for watching.